here. Uh, now, last week you guys started a series. Anybody remember what it's called? It's on the card in front of you, so hopefully you should know. <laughs> Trending, right? And I think Pastor, was it Pastor Sean last week? Was he here? All right, Pastor Sean started the series, and I'm excited to continue it tonight. And before we get into the topic we're going to talk about, I want to first tell you a little story. Uh, and it's not a story, it's not a one prop story, one word. It's actually a real story uh, about a girl named Sarah. So is there any Sarahs in the house tonight? No? Okay, no, you're not. No. All right, so there's no Sarah, so that's good. Uh, so let me tell you a quick story about Sarah, and that's going to lead into what we're talking about. So uh, Sarah was a girl who grew up uh, in a Christian home. Uh, she grew up with parents who believed in Jesus, told her about Jesus, and so from the very beginning of her life, she didn't really remember a time where she didn't know at least a little bit of who Jesus was and what the Bible taught about him. In addition to this, she was a part of a good church, uh, similar to our church. Uh, she went to a church where she heard about Jesus a lot. She heard about what he can do for her and what he has done for her through his death, burial, and resurrection and how she can follow him. Uh, she was involved in a youth group similar to what you guys are involved in here at Gather. Uh, she was there every week. Uh, she was involved in activities, retreats. Who went to Collide a couple, like two weekends ago, right? So she went to things like Collide. She was a big part of that. She was on student leadership. Uh, where's SLT? Where are you at? A couple of you guys. Uh, she was on a student leadership team like that. Uh, she went on mission trips, all that good stuff. Uh, when she was in middle school in that same youth group, uh, she gave her life to Jesus. And so she uh, kind of took all the stuff that she heard from her parents and her youth pastor and her church and finally decided, man, this is for me. This is what I want for my life. And so she placed her faith in Jesus and began a relationship with him. Uh, soon after that, uh, Sarah jumped head first into that relationship with God. She started reading her Bible every day, started to pray, uh, started to serve God in different ways. I mean, she was all in her faith. Uh, but uh, something, a couple of things happened her senior year. So she came to faith in middle school. She kept growing in her faith up until her senior year of high school. And a couple of things happened that really started to shake her faith. And I want to give you those three things real quick. The first one uh, is she lost a baby cousin in a car wreck. And so she had a little baby cousin who tragically uh, died in a car wreck. And so that shook her faith because Sarah is having to figure out, okay, I believe in this God who's loving and good, or at least he says he is, but how does he let a little innocent girl just go and, and, and something that really wasn't, uh, shouldn't have happened, right? Shouldn't have took her life at that early age. And so it really shook her faith. It really made her question who this God is. So that's the first thing that happened. Uh, the second thing that happened in her senior year uh, is her, one of her really good friends uh, came out to her as gay. And so one of her friends that she knew for a long time uh, came out to her and said, hey, I just want you to know I've been hiding this for a while, uh, but, but I'm gay and I want to let you know that and that's the lifestyle I'm going to live. Now this shook Sarah's faith because this is about the same time she was hearing her church talk about homosexuality and she heard her church say homosexuality is wrong, it's a sin, but she has this friend she loves who she cares about and even says she's a Christian that says, hey, I'm gay. And so she's having a hard time kind of figuring out how do I believe and, and love and trust what my friend's saying, but also that the Bible and my church seem to be saying the opposite. So that was shaking her faith. And then the third thing uh, is she started to see a lot of people in her youth group that seemed to be really spiritual and seemed to be kind of the spiritual leaders in her youth group. She started to see them live in a very different way at school. And so one guy in particular, there's a guy who was kind of the the stud in the youth group, like the guy everyone said, man, this is what it looks like to follow Jesus in high school. He was the example, but he noticed at school he became a bully, uh, and he was bullying people, and he even bullied someone with special needs and got into pretty big trouble with that. And so she's like, how in the world does all these people who follow Jesus, or say they follow Jesus, how do they live like that outside of the church, uh, but inside the church they're kind of heralded as these spiritual leaders? So these things happen in her senior year. And what those three things did is it really made her question her faith. <clears throat> it made her question, man, do I really believe this God who says he's good? Do I really believe this Bible that says this is how I should live my life? And her faith started to waver. Her faith started to shake. Now, at first, that looked like she just stopped reading her Bible. She stopped spending time in the Word. She stopped praying. She eventually stopped going to youth group. Uh, and eventually, she got to the point where she said, okay, I'm going to call myself a Christian but I'm really not going to live it out. I'm just going to wear it as a label. And that went on for a little bit until eventually Sarah said, you know what, I'm done with it. I think this Christianity thing's fake. I think there's a lot of issues with it. And she walked away from it. She abandoned it altogether. 
She ended up being someone who basically lived the rest of her life saying, okay, uh, there might be a God, maybe he's out there, but I don't know. I'm just going to live my life, do what I think's best, and hopefully end up being okay. Now, I'll tell you that story. <clears throat> I'll tell you that story, and I want you to know that is a story of a lot of people in your seat, right? That is a story of a lot of people like you who grew up in church, grew up in Christian families, go to a youth group like you are here tonight, and eventually things start to happen that shake your faith, and you tend to walk away from your faith. That's a totally fictional story. I totally made that up. That was pretty good, wasn't it? I wrote that. That's great, all right? I made that up. And that's fiction. Like, I don't actually know a Sarah that did all that. But I tell you that story because I do think it's a true story. And I, and I know a lot of people that's walked that road. And there's a lot of you even tonight <clears throat> that you might be walking down that road as well, where you have a Christian faith at some point in your life, but things have happened and you start to question, you start to doubt, and eventually you walk away from that Christian faith. Now, we call that deconstruction. Has anyone ever heard that phrase before, deconstruction, all right? Some of you. What that is is basically this journey of where you start to question, you start to doubt, and eventually you start to poke holes in the faith that you claim. And many times, unfortunately, you walk away from it. And that's a very trendy thing, right? This series you're in, you're talking about trending, like what's popular. If you go on social media and go hashtag deconstruction, you're going to see it everywhere, right? There's a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people doing it. It's kind of this fad right now that you start to deconstruct this faith that you used to hold on to. Uh, it is a, it's a very trendy thing, deconstruction. And this is what I want to do tonight. I want to help you understand a little bit about what deconstruction is, and I also want to help you uh, understand how can you do it well. And I'll say this in a minute because I think a lot of you in this room, probably the vast majority of you, you are deconstructing or you will deconstruct very, very soon in your life. And so I want to give you some tracks to run on tonight to do that in a way that I think is healthy. All right. But first, let's talk about what it is. So there's three questions. You can throw it up on the screen. We're going to talk about what deconstruction is. How do you, what do you do if you're deconstructing? And then what do you do if your friends are deconstructing? So let's start with that first one. What is deconstructing? And this is on your card if you want to take notes. I want to give you a definition. And there's a lot of different definitions out there, but I think this is one of the best ones, and it's from a guy named Brian Zod, and he, call, and he describes deconstruction like this. A Christian, or a crisis, sorry, a crisis of Christian faith that leads to either a reevaluation of Christianity or sometimes a total abandonment of Christianity. So it's basically a crisis in your Christian faith that leads to either you reevaluating your faith and going deeper or causing you to completely abandon your walk away from your faith. Now, let me give you a side note. You're high schoolers. I didn't tell this to the middle schoolers this week when I talked to them because most of them weren't paying attention anyways. Uh, but uh, let me just give you a heads up. If you Google Brian Zod, this guy that gives a definition, uh, he has some good stuff, but he also has some things uh, that we as a church would strongly disagree with. So if you want to dig in and you find more about him, don't come complaining to me or Johnny. We understand we don't endorse everything he says, but that's a really, really good definition that I think is helpful. Because really what deconstruction is, is at some point in your Christian faith, you, you face a crisis. You have a moment where your faith is going to get shaken. And when that faith is shaken, you're going to do one of two things. Either you're going to grow deeper in your faith, it's going to cause you to reevaluate it, it's going to cause you to step back and maybe look at it and say, okay, what's good, what's not, what's true, what's not, and you're going to go deeper, or... And this is what most people do. This is the trending thing is you just abandon your faith altogether and say, I don't believe it anymore. And you walk away. Now, there's a couple of different ways this happens. And I told you it's a crisis. There's always something that triggers this. And I think you can break it into three categories. And I think this is going to be on the screen. There's typically three categories that comes up. The first one is pain and suffering. All right, pain and suffering. Uh, you're high schoolers. I don't need to tell you this, that life is hard, right? Like, is anyone in here like, life is great. It's not hard at all, right? Any of you? Good, right? You're good. You're not. Life is very difficult. We understand that. Life kicks us in the teeth. Life's tough. And so when people go through pain and suffering, that's usually a trigger that starts them down this road of deconstruction. And so they, they have this moment where they go, okay, I believe in a good God that says he loves me and cares about me, but I'm looking at the world. I'm looking at my own life, and it seems painful, and God's allowing some really hard stuff. And so how do I believe in this good God who's allowing these really painful things to happen? And many times, that's what pushes people down this road of starting to reevaluate their faith or sometimes abandon their faith. A second one is unpopular claims in the Bible. 
And so you've probably started realizing this already as high schoolers. You're going to discover that there's a lot of things that the world and culture and your friends are going to say are good and are right and should be celebrated. But then you're going to look in the Bible and you go, oh my goodness, the Bible says those things are sinful, they're evil, they're wicked. And so really soon you're going to have to wrestle with that. Okay, the Bible says a lot of things are sin. The world says a lot of things are good and it's the same thing. And you're going to have to decide and your faith is going to be stretched of how do you reconcile that? Right? Do you just say the Bible's outdated, it doesn't matter anymore, I'm going to go with the world, or are you going to hold to what the Bible says? But when you do that, it's going to look very unpopular, it's going to look very outdated to the culture. And so that's usually what pushes people down this road. Another thing is they start to get those unpopular claims. So let me give you a couple of them. Uh, one is abortion. Right? Like abortion's hot topic in culture always is. Uh, but if you look at our world, you look at culture, what does it say? Abortion's Okay. Abortion's good in many cases. Abortion is something a woman can do because it's her right. It's her body. That's what our world would say. However, you go to the Bible, and it has an unpopular claim. The Bible says if you take a life, it is murder, and that is sin. Uh, and the Bible also talks a lot about the, the babies inside of women's wombs. They are human beings, right? They have emotions. They have feelings. The Bible says that God knits us together in our mother's womb, meaning when we're in our mother's womb, we're not just some glob of cells. We are a human being, a breathing human being that God has put together. So the Bible says if you take that baby's life, yes, it is murder. And so that is a very unpopular claim in culture. And many people, unfortunately, have went down the road of deconstruction because they have a hard time holding to a belief that the Bible claims and teaches that the world says is unpopular. Another one is homosexuality. And you can just throw a whole umbrella of sexuality, right? Like there is a very different view of sexuality in the world than what the Bible says. And many times as Christians, we try to figure out, okay, how do we hold to what the Bible says but what do we do with all this new kind of sexuality, homosexuality, all the stuff the world's pushing? How do we hold to that? And so that's another thing that pushes people down that road of deconstruction. And then the last category is church hurt. Uh, church hurt. There's been a lot of things, unfortunately, uh, that people experience uh, because of the church that isn't good. Uh, there's a lot of abuse in the church. There's a lot of abuse of power. There's abuse of uh, authority and leadership. And so a lot of people, they get burned by the church, and then that burn from the church leads them down the road of really walking away from their faith or really, really reevaluating their faith. And let me just say this. I will say as one of the pastors here, I think uh, you guys are in a really good church, right? Like I think you're in a healthy church. I think we have a great staff team, a great pastoral team, but I also know we're a church of human beings, uh, and we're pastors that are human beings, and we're staff that are human beings. And so at some point, if you're at Redemption long enough, you're probably going to get hurt. You're probably going to get upset. You're probably going to get offended. It, it's going to happen. And when you do, I want to tell you that is going to be a trigger. It's going to cause you to probably go down some road of deconstruction. And you're either going to learn from that and grow from that and your faith is going to grow richer or it's going to cause you to possibly even abandon and walk away from the faith that you hold now. So those are some kind of broad categories. But really what it is is there's a crisis that hits you and it shakes your faith. And that's what deconstruction is. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you some tips now. What do you do if you're going down that road? Because in a room this size, and I'm sure if we did this and I'm not, if I had you raise your hands, I, I think most of you would say you're either doing this now uh, or you feel like you're really close to doing it. And I would actually say, as one of your pastors, I think it's probably good for you guys to do this a little bit. Uh, I don't think you should go the route of abandoning your faith. I think that's uh, an overreaction. I think it's extreme. But I think if you grew up in church, if you grew up in a youth group like ours, if you grew up in a Christian home, it is really good for you at some point to do some deconstruction. Because at some point you have to wrestle with, man, is this faith that you hold, is it something your parents gave you? Is it something you just believe because the church told you? Or is it something you truly believe, something you truly hold to, something you 100% have confidence in? And sometimes you don't get there until you deconstruct, until you go through a, a period of questioning and doubting and really wrestling with your faith. And so if you're in that place tonight, if you're like, yep, Austin, that's me, I'm going down that road, you're in the right place, right? You're in a safe place. This is a place for you to do that. This is the best context for you to do that. And I will also say as one of your pastors, I identify with you. Uh, I've gone th down a long road of deconstruction myself since college, even to a couple years ago. There's a lot of things I've had to wrestle through and question with my own Christian faith, and it's gotten me to a better place now because I've done that, all right? 
So with that in mind, let me give you some tips. If you are walking down that road of deconstruction, here's some things I want you to remember. The first one is this. Don't panic. All right? Don't panic. If you have questions about your faith, if you start to doubt your faith, if you start to wrestle with your faith, don't freak out. Like the world's not falling apart. God's not up in heaven like, oh my gosh, they're leaving. Like he's fine, right? He's a big boy. He's not panicking. You shouldn't panic. And so if you have doubts, if you have questions, if you're deconstructing, that's okay, right? That's part of being a human being who's trying to follow Jesus. And on this side of heaven, you don't have all the answers. This side of heaven, the Bible says your faith is not complete. And so if you have an incomplete faith, you better believe you're going to have questions, you're going to have doubts, and that's okay. So don't panic. The second thing is this, go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. And this, honestly, this is the one, if I would just get rid of everything else in this talk, I would say this and be done. Go to Jesus. The moment you have questions, the moment you have doubts, the moment you start to deconstruct your faith, go to Jesus. Don't go to Google. Don't go to TikTok. Don't go to Instagram. Like, don't go to the latest, you know, spiritual influencer online that's probably an idiot, right? Don't do that. Go to Jesus. He is the only one that actually has the answers that's going to help you in this process. And let me tell you, there's a guy in the Bible, you've probably heard of this guy, his name's John the Baptist. And he was a guy that came before Jesus, and basically his job was to prepare the way for Jesus. His whole job was to say, hey, listen up, Jesus is coming, this guy's going to forgive you of your sins, listen to him. That, that was his main job. So eventually Jesus came, uh, John kept doing his thing, kept serving the Lord, eventually he was put into prison. And when John was in prison, he started to have questions. He started to have doubts. Uh, In a sense, he started to probably go down a little bit of a road of deconstruction where he goes, man, is this Jesus that I used to preach about, that I believe in, like, is he really who he says he is? Is he really the real thing? Is he really worth me sitting in prison right now? And I love what John does. Look at this. This is in the book of Matthew, chapter 11. This is what John does in response. It says, now, when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, He sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Right, I love that because what John didn't do is go, man, I'm just gonna like sit alone and really try to process all these doubts. Or I'm gonna go, I guess he didn't have his phone. I was gonna say go to TikTok, but that would be, I don't know, whatever the equivalent of TikTok was back then. Uh, He didn't go to someone else and be like, hey, you tell me what I think. No, he says, you know what? I'm gonna go to the source. Now he couldn't, he was in prison. So he sent his disciples And here's the thing, if you have questions about your faith, if you're wrestling with the faith that you hold or maybe the faith that you've heard from your parents or this church, go to Jesus with those questions. Go to him with those doubts. He wants to answer those. He wants to give you truth. He wants to walk with you through it. Go straight to him. And then when you go to him, this is the next thing, ask questions and seek truth. Ask questions and seek truth. I think there's a, uh, there's a little bit of a misnomer. I think that's bad. A lot of times in church, there's this vibe that if you ask questions, you're bad, right? That, that if you have questions about God, you're seen as someone who doesn't truly believe. And I think that is a sad reality because I don't think just because you have faith, you don't have questions, right? I think growing in your faith means you have to ask questions. Growing in your faith is you have to have doubts at times and wrestle with truth and seek deeper truth. And so I want you to have questions. I want you to seek truth. I just want you to go to the right places. And I told you who's the right person to go to? Jesus, right? He's always the right answer. Like, this is true. Like, go to Jesus. Have questions. Seek truth. But go to Jesus. Now, here's the next thing, and this is tied to that. Use your Bible, right? Use your Bible. This is similar to go to Jesus. If I could just have you remember Jesus and Bible, we'd be fine. Go to the Bible, When most people deconstruct, it's because they have issues with the Bible. So what do they do? They put the Bible down. They stop reading the Bible. They go to the internet. They go to social media. And the problem is you're putting down the one thing that actually has the answers, right? You're putting down the one thing that's actually the vehicle for God to speak truth into your life and for God to guide you into truth. I I heard one guy say, when you open the Bible, God opens his mouth, right? Right? And that is so true. Like when you open your Bible, it is God speaking to you. And so if you're wrestling with your faith in him, man, you better believe you have to have your Bible open. There's a great verse in the book of Acts. It talks about these Jewish Christians who didn't take what was taught to them at face value. They took what was taught taught to them and then they went to the Bible to make sure it was true or not. Let, Let me read you this. This is what it says in Acts chapter 17. 
It says, now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. So that's another city, talking about other Christians, but focus on now these Jews were more noble. And then it says, they received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. And so these Jewish Christians says, hey, I've received this faith. Like I've heard people talk about Jesus and I've heard about this Christian faith, but I'm not just going to take it as face as the truth without examining it myself. What did they do? They examined the scriptures daily. They turned to the Bible and said, what does the Bible say about this? And let me just be really honest, all right? You guys hear great stuff from, from this stage, right? Even when you're in the big room, Johnny, Alex, all the other uh, staff and people you hear from, you hear great talks. You hear great talks on Sunday mornings if you're here on Sundays, right? But I just want you to know, don't ever take those talks or sermons and don't go to the Bible and examine and see if those things are true, right? Like as one of your pastors, I think we're preaching the truth, but I also know we're human beings. Don't ever just take our word for it and say, you don't need to examine the scriptures, right? The scriptures are authoritative. The scriptures are infallible. It's perfect. I am not infallible. I am not perfect. I'm a human being. And so don't just take what's been given to you. Don't just take the faith your parents gave you. Don't just take the faith the church gave you. Take it, but then take it to the scriptures and say, man, what's true? Because there's going to be some stuff you've, you've been passed on or passed down from that isn't actually accurate, that isn't maybe true. And so I want you to go to scripture to find out, are those things actually true? Let me give you a few more, and then we'll talk about your friends. Second, the next one is be in community, right? Be in community. If you're going to deconstruct your faith, don't do it alone. If you have questions or doubt about your faith, don't do it alone, right? Do it with other friends that are believers. Do it in a community like this. I mean, gather is a perfect place for you to ask questions, to seek truth, to have doubts. Talk to the youth staff. Talk to your leaders, the volunteers. They want to help you walk through this. And so be in community. And then here's the last thing I want you to do is don't burn it all down and walk away, but build something more beautiful, right? Do not burn it down and walk away. Build something more beautiful. See, here's what usually happens. People deconstruct. They have a crisis. It it shakes their faith. They start to deconstruct. And what they typically do is they walk away, but they don't just walk away. They walk away and they burn everything down with them. And and then they move into this job of, you know what? I'm just not going to abandon Christianity. My job now is I'm going to completely destroy Christianity. And they try to bring other people with them. And they try to just burn everything down. And most of the time, those people are in a worse spot later because they're bitter, they're angry. And what I want to encourage you to do is, man, if you're going to deconstruct, and I think all of you will at some point, do it in a way that's going to lead you to a more beautiful faith, right? Don't do it in a way that's going to make you just burn it all down and walk away. Go do it in a way that's going to lead you to a place of loving Jesus more, understanding his word more, and following him in a much healthier way. I had a friend that, uh, that did a very similar thing to what I'm telling you not to do. Uh, he was a former pastor, a guy I actually worked with. Uh, and he was one of those guys, he seemed to love Jesus, seemed to be passionate about his faith. I mean, he was a great youth pastor. He loved leading people uh, towards Christ. But some things happened in his life. He had some, a couple of different faith crises happen. And when those things came, it, it shook his faith. And he started to question, he started to doubt, and he went down this road of deconstruction. He eventually got down to the point of saying, okay, I don't believe in this anymore. I'm done with it. I'm going to abandon faith altogether. And I wish that's where it stopped. I wish, honestly, not that I wanted him to abandon his faith, but I wish it would have just stopped there and he walked away. But what he did instead is he is now in a position where he is just trying to tear everything down. And he's bringing other people down with him. And he's got this whole thing now where his job, his mission in life is just to tear Christianity apart because of everything that he went through and deconstructed. And I just want to tell you, that's not the only option. If you go online and you look at, you know, hashtag deconstruction, that's who you're going to find. You're going to find people like that. But I want you to know, you can be a person who deconstructs and actually end up with a much better faith than you have right now. You can deconstruct and be a much better, uh, more rich, deeper Christian than you'll ever be right now because of the path you went on. And so don't burn it down and walk away. Build something more beautiful. Now, here's what I want to end with. Let me kind of do this last session, section, and then we're done, is I want you to think about what do you do with your friends that are doing this, all right? Because some of you in this room, you're deconstructing. This is all you. Some of you are like, nope, Austin, I'm good in my faith. I'm solid. I like where I'm at. You don't, you're not going through this, but you have friends that are. And some of those friends are probably sitting at your table, right? Like you have people at Gather that you see every week that are deconstructing. And so what do you do for them? 
Like there's some things you need to do, but what do you need to do for your friends who are going down this road? And the first thing is this, don't panic. It's the same as the first one with you. Don't panic. If your friends start to question their faith, don't try to be like, oh my gosh, the world is ending. What am I going to do? Like, don't panic. You don't need to panic when you deconstruct. You don't need to panic when your friends are. Jesus isn't panicking, so do not panic. Secondly, this. Give them space to struggle. Give them space to struggle. Man, if your friends are deconstructing and they're wrestling with their faith, give them space to do that. Don't try to quickly fix them. Don't try to like, you know, find the person in spiritual authority and be like, hey, go fix my friend. Like, no, give them space to struggle. Let them wrestle through that. That's something you probably had to do and will do. It's something they need to do as well. And then when you do that, remember this, listen, 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 please listen, ask questions and remind them of truth. Don't beat them over the head with the Bible, right? If your friends are questioning their faith, the last thing you should do is go shove a bunch of Bible verses down their throat. Don't do it, right? <clears throat> Seek, ask them questions. Listen to them. Give them truth, but do it in a way that's gentle and kind, right? Listen and ask questions and dialogue with them. But here's the sad reality. Uh, this is the last thing. Here's the sad reality. Uh, some of your friends will walk away. Right? Some of your friends will completely abandon their faith, and you're going to have to wrestle with that, and that will be hard, especially if you are someone who continues following Jesus. You will have friends that say, you know what? This Christianity thing that I used to believe in, I don't believe it anymore. I'm done. There's going to be people even in this room, uh, stats bared out. There's some of you in this room, you, you think you're following Jesus right now, you feel like that's where you're at, but eventually you're going to graduate, and you're going to walk away from Jesus. Right? You're not going to follow Jesus forever. And so a lot of you are going to have friends that right now might seem like good Christian friends that are one day going to abandon their faith. And what in the world do you do when that happens? How do you respond to that? And there's two quick things I want you to do. There's two things to remember. First, remember that if they completely walk away from Jesus, and I don't think this is on your card, so if you want to jot it down, you can. If not, it's fine. But if they completely walk away from Jesus, remember this. It's a sign that they actually never had a relationship with Jesus to begin with. And that's a sad reality, but I think it's a reality we have to face. If you have a friend, and, and if this is you, maybe you're in this spot, if you place your faith in Jesus at some point, but then some point later you completely abandon that faith and walk away, the Bible's very clear. You never had faith to begin with. You might have had an experience, you might have prayed a prayer, you might have gone to church, but man, you did not actually have a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And the fact that you walked away is a sign that you never had it to begin with. Let me read you a verse. This is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. It says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, they, but they went out that it might become plain that they were not of us. So that verse is clear. If someone is in the church, if someone is following Jesus, but then eventually they walk away completely, they were not following Jesus to begin with. And why do I tell you that? I don't tell you that to judge your friends that walk away. Don't do that, right? I tell you that to say, if you have friends that walk away, understand they probably just never experienced Christ in the first place. And what's your job? Is to then treat them like an unbeliever. Love them, care about them, point them to Jesus, share the gospel with them, right? And that leads me to the second thing. If your friends completely walk away, just love them like Jesus loves them. Care for them, have compassion for them. Don't get mad at them. Let me give you one other verse. This is from Matthew. It says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, right? That is your friends that walk away from Jesus. That's anyone in this world that doesn't know Jesus. They are lost. They're helpless. They don't have a shepherd. And what did Jesus do? He had compassion for them. So if your friends walk away completely, don't be a jerk, don't judge them. Don't cast them out. Don't act like they're the worst thing in the world. Keep loving them and say, man, I love you like Jesus. And realize they're helpless. They're lost, just like you were before Christ. Let me end with this. Let me give you one quote. This is from the guy that I started with. He has a great quote, and I think it sums up what I want you to remember from all this. He says this, we don't need to deconstruct Christian faith. We need to restore Christian faith. We do it prayerfully. We do it patiently. We do it reverently. We do it with kid gloves and Q-tips, not with dynamite and sledgehammers. And I don't know where you're at tonight. <clears throat> I don't know if you're deconstructing. I don't know if you have deconstructed. I don't know if you will one day. I don't know if your friends are. I don't know if this is like you've never heard this topic and you're like, I don't understand what's going on. Wherever you're at, this is the posture we need to have. 
Our goal is not to deconstruct and burn Christianity down. Our goal is to restore Christianity, to make it more beautiful. And, and that starts with us, right? To reevaluate it, to make sure we're following true biblical Christianity. And when we do that, we do it prayerfully. We do it with Jesus. We do it patiently. We do it with kindness and love. And we do it, I love what he says, with kid gloves and Q-tips, meaning we don't just go around and beat everyone down with the truth. And we don't go to ourselves and just say, man, I'm just a terrible person. We do it gently and lovingly with ourselves and with others because our goal is to get to a deeper faith at the end of the day, all right? And so with that in mind, let me pray. Uh, and then I think you guys are gonna do some small group time. But let me pray as you go into that. Uh, Father God, we do thank you uh, for your word. We thank you that you love us and you give us your word so we know how to deal uh, with things like deconstruction. And God, I know that uh, there's plenty of stuff online. God, there's so much on social media about this. And God, most of it's not helpful. God, most of it is just people that are really angry and hurt. And so Lord, I pray that our students, everyone in this room, myself included, God, I pray that we would not uh, go to those sources for our answers. God, that we would go to you, that we'd go to your word. Uh, God, that we would take our doubts and questions and our whole deconstruction process to your feet and submit to you and ask you to help us get to a deeper, more beautiful faith than we have right now. So God, I pray that for myself. I pray that for these students. And I just pray, God, anyone in this room who's in this journey, uh, Lord, you would keep them from abandoning the faith, that you would pull them into a deeper relationship with you because that's your heart, that's your desire. And we love you in Christ's name. Amen.